Welcome to Pet Pals. I'm Dee Dee and this is Randy and we're here at Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center on Rosemont Avenue. And every week we uh, come to you to bring you adoptable animals at your animal shelter. And our first guest is uh, a real gem of a dog. This is Duchess and Duchess is a treeing walker coon hound. And if you like hounds, these are one of my favorites because they are purposely bred so that the hunter can walk along beside them. You don't need to be on horseback. You don't need to run. You don't need to go into a deep brush trailing them because they're bred for the gentleman hunter so that uh, you can keep up. And uh, that makes them, as hounds go, a little more mellow, a little more calm. And because Duchess is nine, she also has maturity on her side and lots of experience. She lived with um, a lab, with cats, with kids of all ages, and um, she has been at the shelter before, so we know a bit about her. And she's really a great dog. Um, she, uh, because she's nine, then obviously hounds live 12 to 15 years, so obviously you're not going to have her for the next 15 years. But one of the things people often don't think about when they get a dog is that because dogs live 12 to 15 years they are given up a lot because the number of changes that happen to you and your family in a decade and a half are immense you could move you could uh, change jobs you could have a new baby even if it's a grandbaby that moves into your house so in the time that dogs live they are often seeking second and even third homes so there's a decided advantage to getting a nine-year-old girl like this who already is house trained, knows how to walk on a leash, knows how to act around children and other animals because you will not have to spend any time training her other than teaching her that you're gonna be there for her for the time she has left to give. Um, if you are interested in a dog like Duchess, let us know because we do keep a wish list. You can tell us you want a Walker Coon Hound. We'll call you when we get one but she is pretty unique in that she has all of this great experience and a great temperament to boot. Our next guest is Sonar, and Sonar is a long-haired brindled chihuahua, a little girl, and uh, she has experience uh, with kids, and uh, her owner says she likes other dogs. She didn't live with other dogs, um, but that she plays well with them when they visit. The great thing about her having experience with kids is a lot of tiny dogs, if they don't have experience with kids, are afraid of them because uh, children are quick, um, often loud. Their movements and um, activities are a lot different from adults. Adults don't usually walk up to a strange dog, grab them uh, by the face, and pull them right into their face. But children often do that, especially with puppies. And for an adult dog, that's very frightening if it hasn't happened to them before. Um, so luckily, this little girl has experience with kids. And that doesn't mean that you wouldn't supervise your children with a tiny dog because they can also get dropped and stepped on. Um, <coughs> but it does mean that um, she can approach children you know, with confidence. And, and she knows that they behave differently from adults. And that's nothing to be afraid of. She is super cute. And uh, that makes a lot of people want a little dog like this just because we're drawn to small baby-like things. She also gives a lot of um, appeasing yeah. behaviors. She bumps your hand to get petted. She wags her tail a lot. So uh, she really likes people and I think she's gonna make somebody a great pet. Um, her uh, family gave her up because of uh, family crisis. And one of the things that people often believe is how could you ever give up your pet? And they often judge people who bring their pets to the shelter harshly. One thing I can tell you from working at the admission desk is there is not a day that goes by where someone doesn't tell me uh, that they wish they could do anything other than giving up their pet. So something that might help you have a little compassion for people in the situation is to think, 
what would it take? What would have to happen to you and your family for you to even consider giving up your pet? Because those tragedies are what's happening to people in Frederick who bring in their pets. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't people who get a dog and they're unprepared and they don't train the dog and when the dog is 18 months old, they bring it to the shelter because they haven't done the work they need to make the dog into a wonderful family member. Um, but that is not as common as people who come in in family crisis, either someone passes away or they've lost their home to foreclosure. Or in one case, uh, there was a story of uh, some people who lost their home to foreclosure, moved in with a family member, and that house burned down. I mean, if you can imagine going through that with your family and what you would be faced with, then you'll see more of the reasons that people do part with a perfectly wonderful pet. Because that's the other thing. People assume animals in the shelter must have something wrong with them, or why would someone give them up? And that is also not the case at all. While we do have some 18-month-old untrained big dogs, that's a solvable problem. What we have more of is dogs like Duchess and like Sonar that have family experience and um, a lot to offer someone in their second chance. Our next guest is Buddy. And um, Buddy is three or four years old and uh, he is a lot of fun. We think he's part lab, uh, maybe part lab, part beagle. We always take a guess. And um, this is what just about everybody wants when they get um, a family pet. He is young and healthy. He likes to play. He loves people. Um, he'll uh, be a great kid's companion because he um, has a lot of energy, as you can see. And we've color coded him as green. And what that means is that he's green. He doesn't know anything yet. So he pulls on the leash and he doesn't necessarily sit when you ask him to, but because of his love of toys and interest in doing stuff, it isn't gonna be hard to motivate him to learn the things that you want him to learn. And as you see, uh, the retriever in him uh, is active and makes him uh, carry his toys around. And uh, he quickly settled down once he came in. He was excited to be in a new place and grab some new toys and smell some new smells. So um, if you are interested in uh, a young, perfectly sized dog, uh, the reason I like the size of Buddy is because you could take him hiking, swimming, walking, and feel very safe and enjoy his company, but in an emergency, if you had to, you could pick him up, you could um, help him into the car, things like that. So uh, he's a great size for a dog and um, pretty cute. And I think that uh, if anyone is looking for a family pet, this is the way to go. You get uh, a, a medium-sized dog with a mixture of breeds that is uh, interested in playing, and you can get a lot, um, a lot done. You are sweet, buddy. We are back with Sweetie, and Sweetie, as you can plainly see, is a tiny little tan chihuahua. And uh, Randy, my animal wrangler and animal whisperer, is handling her very carefully because she's scared of new people. And so um, in many animal shelters, little dogs like her don't get a chance to be adopted. Because if you're scared of new people, everyone in the shelter is new. So uh, you're going to be overwhelmed and shy um, every minute of every day. So what we are asking of Sweetie right now is to spend a couple minutes with Randy, who's perfectly safe, strong, and gentle, and that will help her. But where she gets to stay during the day is she gets to go home with one of our employees and live in a home situation with someone with lots of experience with tiny dogs in a situation that doesn't stress her out. So if you want to adopt Sweetie, how would you see her if she's not at the shelter? You would give us a call and ask if you can come and visit her. And then we can arrange for her caretaker to bring her in and for you to meet her. Obviously, we're gonna look for a home for her without small children because that would be too scary for her. So uh, most people who like chihuahuas want someone to sit with them and watch movies and read books and maybe go to the store. Some things that Sweetie would really like to do with someone she knows well. So um, if you are interested in Sweetie, then uh, please call us in advance and we'll arrange for you to meet her, see what she thinks of you, and uh, see if we can make a match. We're gonna take a short break and let Sweetie go back to uh, the person that she trusts most right now. 
and um, then we'll be back with more animals. I hope you join us then. And if you've seen any animals that interest you in our first segment, remember to go to Pet Finder and share their profiles at work or on social networking. You can share this episode of Pet Pals. We'll give you a link at the end of the show after our next segment. Um, or you can just uh, share their pictures on Facebook. It really helps us to get the word out. Don't be sad. Are you scared? Don't be if you're looking for an incredible experience, meet a shelter pet and a dog. They make super pets who will enrich your life and steal your heart. Adopt and bring home a shelter pet today. To find out more, visit the shelterpetproject.org. Did you know that all of Frederick County's mixed recyclables go to a materials recovery facility to be sorted? For this to happen, your recyclables need to be placed into a cart or bin loose, not in bags. Trash bags are not recyclable, and materials in bags are difficult to open at the sorting center and are not accepted. The only exception to this rule are recyclable plastic bags, like grocery store bags, which do need to be gathered together inside one bag so that they don't get caught in the sorting facility's machinery. Also, shredded paper should be placed inside a paper bag or cardboard box so that it can be collected and sorted properly. Thank you for helping to make recycling work better for our community. And remember, please don't bag your mixed recyclables. More information on our recycling program can be found online, in our mobile app, or by calling our office. Recycle more, waste less. Welcome back to Pet Pals. Uh, we are at 1832 Rosemont Avenue, your animal shelter, bringing you some adoptable cats that are in need of uh, second and sometimes third homes. This guy is named Jack, and Jack is a beautiful and big brown tabby cat with beautiful green eyes. He is three years old, and uh, he has two sisters, uh, and they're not biological sisters, but two female cats that he has shared his life with thus far, uh, sharing a big condo with him. So if you are interested in adopting more than one cat, Jack and his companion Mitzi are available. Um, his other companion, Pearl, has already been adopted. She has a longer hair, and one of the things that all, often happens on the show is that we want to show you a variety of animals so that people realize the shelter has plenty of different kinds of pets. But what often happens is the most unusual looking animals are adopted very shortly after coming into the shelter. So uh, they don't get to go on the TV show because we only do this once a week. So let's say an animal comes in on Monday, is adopted on Tuesday, spayed and neutered on Wednesday and goes home, you would never see them on the TV show. So it is a great idea to come to the shelter as often as you can if you're looking for something special. And uh, his sister Pearl had very long hair and that's why she was um, selected right away and will be off to her new life this week. So Jack and Mitzi, who you'll meet in a moment, are uh, waiting. And the reason that they were given up is uh, that their family was moving and it was a house full of animals, uh, several cats and several dogs. So a lot of times people ask when they are going to adopt a cat, will this cat get along with my dog? And while we can never guarantee that any two individual animals will genuinely like each other, this is a cat that has experience with several dogs and several cats, and uh, that makes him uh, very social, probably very adaptable to other pets. And uh, that's a great thing when you want to know up front what your chances are of making a perfect match. We are back with Mitzi, and Mitzi is currently living with Jack in a condo cage. And we do have a variety of cages here at the shelter. We have our kitty cabana, which is a free range room where the cats can walk around, climb on shelves on the walls, look out the window. Um, and the cats that are in there are uh, social with each other. And you can go in there and sit on the bench and invite them to come interact with you. Then we also have condo cages like uh, Mitzi, Jack, and Pearl are living in. Those are large with two levels and hide boxes and um, uh, scratching posts. And we reserve those for litters of kittens 
or groups of cats that want to stay together. Um, and then we also have our stainless steel cages, which most people are familiar with, but ours are unique in that we have portals in the walls of them so we can connect them so that litters of kittens have uh, three rooms or if there are uh, a number of cats like these three adults that come in together and the condo is taken, then we can connect a bunch of cages together so their litter pan and sleeping area and eating area can be separate and also so there's plenty of room for all of them. We also have stainless steel cages that are larger than the standard ones with a shelf in them. Uh, cats enjoy being up high, so the idea that they can be off the floor helps them feel more secure. And then we also have um, uh, some PVC hammocks that were made for us by volunteers that we can add to any cage that adds a mid-level and a hiding space. So uh, we do the best we can to make the space that cats stay in in the shelter uh, as cat friendly as possible. And as I've said before, often people think it's sad to see cats in cages. And while there are many wild cats that wouldn't accept that kind of housing, uh, pet cats do like to be in a place when they have to go to a new place that has a back and sides so that they can feel protected. So uh, we have found over the years that when cats are moved to a new cage, they're a little bit insecure for a day. So we do our best to keep them in the same place that they're first introduced to for as long as we can. And uh, we have also found that that helps us reduce the risk of cats sharing uh, germs and catching colds. So um, it's a change that many shelters have adopted, not just here. Uh, and it has been a positive thing for cats. It's very easy for us to judge things based on how we would feel and that is a trap of animal care. You always want to use uh, science-based uh, information that you can gather as well as your observation skills as uh, unbiased as you can be, we all have biases, to uh, evaluate what the animal is telling you. And if the animal is eating and sleeping and using the litter box and interacting with people, then regardless of how you would feel in that situation, the animal, specifically cat in this case, is telling you that the situation is okay for her. We are back with Rose, and Rose is between one and two years old. She's a female cat uh, that was found as a stray, but so friendly and comfortable with people that we're sure she knows someone so, uh, and belonged to someone. As you all know, only about 2% of our lost cats are reclaimed by their owners, so that's higher than the national average, but really, that's just not enough. Um, people in Frederick are clearly not knowing to um, put up signs and come to the shelter to look for their cats on the one hand, but on the other hand, I know in several instances that we have found people's cats, people who were actively looking and in here all the time, after two and four months. So it is perfectly reasonable to um, give up after a time looking for your cat. You may assume something happened to her, or you might um, assume that someone took her in and that you're not gonna get her back. But I guess I would encourage you to keep looking longer than you think because we regularly put on our Facebook page when someone finds their cat between two to four months after they reported them missing, and oftentimes that's because they had a collar or microchip on their cat. And I have to tell you, this kitty is uniquely marked. She has beautiful colored eyes. She wants to get out. Um, and uh, unique markings. If someone sent us a picture of her, it would be very possible to match her. But without a microchip or a collar, if we don't find her until four months after she was reported missing, it becomes less and less likely that we're gonna make that match to the lost report. In addition, uh, some of the cats that were found because they had a collar or a microchip, the owners themselves said, if he didn't have this collar on or he, or he didn't have a microchip, I wouldn't recognize him. Uh, cats lose weight. They um, are you know, exposed to a lot of outdoor things that can uh, get them dirty. So it's not that you're not gonna recognize your cat if he has asphalt gray on him but when they are thinner and a little more frightened it's a little harder for you 
to recognize, say, a brown tabby like Jack or an all-black cat because they change significantly in their appearance if they lose enough weight. So if you lose your cat, I can't emphasize enough, tell us right away. Take a picture of your cat right now and keep it on your cell phone in case your cat is ever missing. One of the things that people often do is they wait too many days before they call. Um, posting is a good idea because too many free roaming cats. Oh yeah, and free Randy's roaming. saying post a picture of your cat on your Facebook page or if you don't have that. On the telephone pole. Yeah, or uh, just in your neighborhood because um, people who see stray cats assume that they're unwanted free roaming cats. They just assume, well, that cat looks confident and I'm sure someone's taking care of him. So you really need to get the word out when your cat is missing. It's also not uncommon for cats that go outside to have two or three homes that they are fed at. So it is important to get the word out because many people assume that they loosely own a cat um, that actually belongs to someone else. So um, in this little cat's case, we're calling her Rose. Clearly she could have had another name and um, she is lovable. We're gonna spay her and microchip her for um, someone who wants her. And okay. then um, it will be easier to uh, keep her with the people she belongs with. We are back with another stray kitty. This is a between six and seven year old female cat. And uh, as you can see, orange tabby and white, very friendly. And um, so we know she was someone's cat for a couple of reasons. Number one is how comfortable she is with people. But number two is the fact that she's about six years old means that it is unlikely for her to have just lived on her own all of that time. So um, there's a shorter life expectancy for stray cats and they normally don't see uh, middle age. So, um, and also red cats are more likely to be male. Not always, there's ginger cats that are female. Um, but uh, it's most likely that um, this little kitty had um, a family at some point and Here lost them. Here. Yes, they did. So um, Randy was commenting on her body language. She wanted to get down, normal for cats to ask for that. But when Randy didn't let her, the fact that her ears folded back said that she was getting mad about that. So, um, and even though she got mad, she didn't do anything. Um, so. She is a very, very sweet cat that wants to be with people, but a more brave independent. I mean, if she's gotten to middle age, then she has her own thoughts about things that she likes. Mm -hmm. And um, we would love to be able to find her rightful owner, but she has been in the shelter well over the five days that we used to do that. And now we have named her Aphrodite, and we are looking for a new home for her. One of the things that, um, we just talked about was people not looking for their stray cats and I shouldn't really say they don't look they just don't come here I'm sure that people are expending energy and trying to find their cats but we are the only shelter in Frederick County we are the only facility that takes in lost animals so it's the place to come if your pet is missing and at least call us but we absolutely recommend that you come in person because you might imagine someone could say hey I lost my ginger cat now, we get 15 new animals a day. Some of them are all red, some of them are orange, some of them are pale cream colored, some of them have stripes, some of them don't have stripes. So we really aren't gonna be able to tell for sure if we do or don't have your cat. Um, we also get found reports from people who don't bring animals in but snap a picture in their yard. So if you've lost your cat, you're definitely gonna wanna look through those pictures. There's also a Facebook page called Lost and Found Animals in and around Frederick County where people post pictures of animals they see outside as well as animals they've taken in, as well as animals that um, they have lost. So there's a lot of ways for you to connect with people who might know where your missing pets are. And uh, above all, call us, tell us your pet is missing, and we'll go all over that again so that you will know how to start looking. And I can't emphasize enough, take a picture of your pet right now. Our next guest is Tucker, and uh, Tucker's just under a year old, and he is um, already neutered, came to us neutered as a stray, and obviously, once again, I would like to point out, we made up the name Tucker uh, because he's neutered and friendly. I assume he has another name given to him by a family who uh, cared for him at one point and did not uh, reclaim him from the shelter. So he is now available for adoption, 
and uh, he's a lovely cat. Um, for as young as he is, he's not too high energy, he's affectionate. I think he's gonna make someone a really great pet. Um, while we are showing you all these animals at the shelter, I don't want anyone to forget that we also have about five bunnies, including a lop and including one that's almost big enough to be a Flemish giant. And um, we have um, a little tiny guinea pig. We also have plenty of cats that we have not shown you. So you should check out our PetFinder.com page. And we also show animals on Petango. Um, that's um, PetTango.com where you can view a lot of the animals that are available for adoption. One thing though is that because we get up to 15 animals a day, sometimes more, but it's an average of 15 a day, <clears throat> it's really important to uh, check our stray page if you're looking for a pet, come in person if your pet's lost, but also to uh, visit the shelter if you're looking for a pet because we have people come in all the time and say, I saw the perfect dog for me, but he's already taken. Um, it is very common for new animals to get adopted very quickly. So if you are interested in a purebred dog and you want to fill out our wish list, we can help you out by that. Uh, so let's say you want a Maltese and um, every time you come to the shelter, the Maltese's and the Maltese mixes are taken. If you tell us you want a Maltese, we'll call you when we get one. But if you want a puppy, or if you want a kitten, then we just have to ask that you come in as often as you can because it would be really hard for us to take a guess at which one you might like and uh, to give you a heads up in advance since there are so many. And the idea of getting a pet is pretty individual. You have to come and meet them and fall in love and um, that's something that we can't plan. So if you think, um, uh oh, I think Tucker's fallen in love with Randy. Um, if you think his, his back leg is hanging all the way down so if you think that Tucker would make a good match for you or someone that you know, then you know what I always say, share them on Facebook, go to Pet Finder and uh, make a flyer from their profile page and post that at work. Um, post it around your neighborhood if you're allowed to, put it in your HOA newsletter. You can um, post it sometimes schools and shops that you frequent have bulletin boards, doctor's offices. Um, we also have two cats right now that are at the Love a Pet Center in um, the PetSmart on 355, right south of town. And that is a great partnership we have with the Animal Welfare League where they'll take some of our pets that have been here for a while over to PetSmart where they can be showcased in a different place. The reason we like that is not everyone knows where the shelter is and also the doctor's office postings and the shop postings are very, very helpful because a lot of people who have pets go to PetSmart to buy food, so they're not looking for a new pet, or a lot of people who have pets come to the shelter, they volunteer, they help us at events, but what we want to do is reach out to people who don't have pets, um, who might be looking in doctor's offices and stores and um, places where they don't even know they're looking. So you can definitely help us out with that. Um, so Tucker's gonna take a nap now. Um, thank you for joining us on uh, Pet Pals, and we will see you next time. In the meantime, between episodes, uh, you can come and see us at the shelter. If you've ever thought about fostering or volunteering, fill out an application. It's no obligation. If we call you and you've changed your mind, just say you're busy and maybe next time. Um, but we can certainly use all the help we can get and um, hope you've enjoyed today's episode of wonderful animals that will um, make wonderful pets maybe for you. The most important piece of equipment in your home is your smoke alarm, and it is probably the easiest and cheapest to maintain. Keep your family safe this year with regular smoke alarm checkups. Regularly check the batteries and perform periodic testing. For more information about smoke alarm safety and maintenance, visit the Frederick County Division of Fire and Rescue Services website at frederickcountymd.gov slash smoke alarms.